Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. In this section, we're going to start to talk about macros. And macros are something that you might have used before. They're very popular in many Microsoft applications. You might have used macros in Excel or Word, but they do work a little bit different when it comes to access. So we're going to start out by going over the basics and then we'll move on to some more advanced uses of macros. Now, many, many people don't like the thought of programming, but macros in access are pretty straightforward once you get into them. And I would say that if you do get a basic grasp of access macros, the advantages of using them far outweigh the drawbacks. So we're going to start out in this lesson with an introduction to macros. We're going to talk a little bit about macros versus VBA. We're going to take a look at how we can put together a very basic macro, how we can run a macro and how we can edit a macro. So let's start out by talking about what exactly macros are, if you're not familiar with that term. Now, a macro is essentially how we automate a series of repetitive steps. For example, if there is something that you do frequently, maybe a process that you run or steps that you take every week. For example, maybe you run a report every single week. Instead of going through the steps of actually running that report within Access, you could record those steps in a macro and then simply run the macro, which will effectively replay all of those steps automatically and run that report for you. So macros record steps and they help us automate repetitive and tedious tasks. Now, macros are essentially VBA code. Now, if you've used macros in other applications, and I'm going to use the example of Excel, you'll know that you have macros and you have VBA that sit behind those macros. When you record steps and build a macro, you're essentially creating VBA code. And if we know VBA well enough, we don't even have to record the steps and create a macro. We could just simply type out the code and save it as a module in Excel. And that's pretty standard across all of Microsoft Office. But in Access, macros and VBA are very different languages. So it is a little bit different to an application like Excel. And I would say that in Access, macros are a lot easier to use than VBA. So let's start out by taking a look at how we can create a very basic macro. So I'm just working in our CRM database again. You'll find this in the course files folder in section seven. This is 701 that we're working on. And if we go to the create tab, you'll see that right at the end, we have a macros and code group. And one of the options in there is macro. So let's click to open it up. Now, immediately you'll see that this looks completely different to creating a macro in Excel. We can select an action over on the left hand side and we have a big long list of things to pick from. And then we have an actions catalog over on the right. Now, there is a bit of a tradition in the program world that when you're creating a new macro, you get the macro to output hello world. It's like it's introduction into the world. So we're going to stick with that theme and we're basically going to create a macro that pops up a message box that says hello world. So we're going to click in the add new action drop down box. And one of the options that we have in here is to display a message box. So let's select this and now we can define our options. So what do we want it to say in the message box? Well, I want it to say, hello, world. I can then choose if I want it to make a sound when the message box pops up. So do I want to beep, yes or no? I'm gonna say no. We then get to define the type of message box this is. So is it critical? Is it a warning? Is it information? So we're gonna say that it's a warning and then we can give the message box a title. So this title will just appear at the top in the title bar of the message box. So I'm just gonna say this is important. Now, if I wanted to at this stage, I could then go in and I could add another action so we can build up a series of steps or a sequence of steps by simply adding different actions into a macro. And Access will execute these steps depending on what order they're listed out in the macro. So currently the message box is going to pop up first. Now we're just going to keep things super basic. First of all, this is all we're going to have in our macro. If I jump up to the macro design ribbon, notice that we have a run button. So theoretically I can click this to run it, but I need to save my macro first. 
So I'm going to say, yes, I want to save the macro and I now need to give my macro a name. So much like everything else, I have a prefix for my macros. So I'm going to say MCR, we'll call this hello world and click on OK. So it runs the macro and check out what we have. We have exactly that. We have a message box that says hello world. The type is warning. That's why we have the yellow triangle and we have this is important in the title bar. If I click on OK, it's going to get rid of that. Let's click the run button again and there we go. So a very simple and straightforward little macro. Now, another thing to be aware of, if we go over to the navigation pane, notice that currently I'm only showing the tables that we have in this database. So if I click the drop down, let's choose macros and there is my macro sitting just there. So if I'd close this down, if I wanted to, I could rerun this simply by double clicking on it from the navigation pane and that macro will run. If I want to edit, if I right click, I need to just jump into design view, click in the message box area and I can edit any part of that macro. Now in that example, we need to click the run button in order for this macro to run or alternatively double click on it in the navigation pane. But it's important to note that macros can be executed by different actions. For example, we could execute a macro by clicking on a button or hovering our mouse over something. And we're going to look more at that in the next lesson. Just to finish out this little example, let's add another action. And we're just going to add another message box. And we'll say we want the message to say, I hope you are well. We are going to have a beep this time. Let's say we want this to be information and we want the title to be have a nice day. Now, remember, the macro will execute these steps in the order that we see them here. Let's close this down and give it a go. I'm going to say yes, I want to save changes. If we double click, what we should find is there is our first message box pop up. As soon as I click on OK, the next step of the macro is going to run, which is to pop up another message box. I heard a little beep and there we have. I hope you're well. When we click on OK, it exits out of the macro. So that is how you create and run a basic macro in Access. In the next lesson, we're going to talk more about macros, different ways that we can execute them. And also we're going to take a look at the auto exec macro. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.